Hi everybody and welcome to session three. Um, in this session we're going to be talking about getting your message across. So there's a few different things that we want to really focus on in this session. First one is really knowing what your outcome is. We'll talk more about that in a second. We also want to, to talk about knowing your product and really understanding it, really getting underneath the, um, the, the, the pages of your product and fully understanding it. We talk about the key elements that you want to be drawing out to include in your scripts. We'll look at some different types of script. And then we're going to go into writing your script. Now, I have to say, we could probably run a whole week's session on um, script writing. And um, some people do do that. There are courses out there for doing that. The purposes of this session today is to give you an introduction to script writing and to give you a framework that will allow you to produce scripts that are better than 80% um, of the rest of the people in your niche. So as I say, it's really important to know your outcome. So every video that you create should have just one distinct outcome. It might be that you want them to go and buy your product. That might be the outcome that you're looking for. But if you break it down, is that really the outcome that you want them to buy the product? Or do you just want them to click a link? Or do you want them to um, opt in to a mailing list? Whatever it is, there should only ever be one outcome per video. Because if you try and have multiple outcomes, you'll have people jumping off and getting confused. And if people have too many choices, nine times out of ten, they won't take any of them. So keep it very, very specific. One video, one outcome. So here's some examples. Buy your product might be an outcome. Opt into the mailing list might be an outcome. Click a link. Very simple outcome there. You might even want to get them to go and type in a URL. Uh, my mentor uh, last year released a product and he had a 45 minute sales video. And at the end of that sales video, there wasn't even a link on the page to click. What he was doing was he was telling people, you know, if you want to get this fantastic offer, type in this URL. And he had a phenomenal conversion rate from that video. So don't discount getting them to type something. The video could be, the outcome could be, that you want to create suspense. So you want to create some sort of cliffhanger. And, and your outcome is literally just to have people sitting on the edge of their seat saying, what happens next? But I would say you need to be really careful if you're doing that. You have to be sure, 100% sure, that that suspense is enough to get them to come back and watch your next video. And really, you only want to do this after you've got an opt-in. So you've seen um, all of these launches that typically happen these days where there's multiple videos in a series. And to get access to the first one, you watch a short video which says what's going to be in them. You get somebody then to opt-in, and you send them that first video. And at the end of that first video, there's something that they see or something that you've told them, something that you have got them excited about, and you're saying, but I'll tell you in the next video. So you've created that suspense, you've got their information. If you've done it well, when you send them that email to say, here's the next video where you find out what happened, if you've done it well, they'll click the link and they'll watch the video. If you haven't done it well, they're probably going to unsubscribe from that next message. So, that's key. Each video, one distinct outcome. The next thing is, if you're producing any sort of sales or marketing video, you really need to know your product inside out. So think about, what problem are you solving? And when I say what problem are you solving, I, I'm not talking about, what does the product do? Okay, so you might be um, selling, uh, let's say, a weight loss product. The problem that you're solving isn't weight loss. The problem that you're solving is obesity. 
or the problem that you're solving is people having tried to lose weight and been unable to. If you're selling um, a product which is teaching people how to trade stocks, the problem that you're solving isn't that people want to learn to trade stocks. The problem that you're solving is that um, people have maybe looked at this, they've thought about it as an idea, but they're afraid because of lack of information. So you're actually, in that instance, the problem you're solving is that fear. The barrier to entry into something that could be a lucrative investment for them. Then you want to go on and say, why hasn't this problem been solved already? So why does the problem even still exist today? And you want to think about what's really possible. And I actually like to think about this in two ways. I like to think what's possible with my product and what is possible if I could wave a magic wand and have any possibility out there. And if it's your own product, you might want to then say, okay, what's the gap between what my product delivers and what is ultimately possible? And then you have a number of options. You can either make your product better, or you can potentially even look at creating a follow-on product, which goes into the next step, the next stage of people's development, whatever it might be. So now that you've looked at the problem, you understand why it hasn't already been solved, you understand what's po possible, you then start to relate your product back to this. Okay, so you say, how does your prob uh, product solve the specific problem that exists? And what should the viewer do? Okay, they've watched the video. They understand why your product is unique. They understand what's possible. They understand why this problem hasn't been solved by other people or why they've tried and failed already. But so what? You know, you can learn these things by watching a documentary on the Discovery Channel. So what you need to do now is you need to say, right, okay, here's a problem. People have tried to solve it and failed. This is what's possible. This is how my product does this. Now, take action. And that action might be, as we said in the previous slide, it might be just to go and put your name and email address in here. Or go and click this link. Or if you've done a good enough job of really building the value of the product, you might say, click the Add to Cart button but you make it very, very specific. So we then want to look at the key elements of the product, and we're going to use all of this initial information and the key elements of the product. We're going to start using them when we get into actually sculpting the script. And the three, the three key elements, which you may have come across before, are features, advantages, and benefits. Okay, let's look at those a little bit more. So, a feature is a fact or a point relating to your product, service, or whatever package you're putting together. So, in simple terms, it could be something like the color, could be the size, could be the weight, could be how well it performs. Okay, it could be any of these things. It could be um, speed, okay? So something's going to deliver something more quickly than anything else. So that's a feature, that it's fast. Um, it might be that it's thorough, okay? So features are very important, but people don't buy features. People want to know them. Uh, so, for example, we're looking to buy a new wardrobe for one of our, our spare bedrooms, and... We want to know how wide that wardrobe is to fit in a gap. But we won't buy based purely on size. If we can't find one that we like the look of, it doesn't matter if we find one that fits. The feature is only something that helps us make a, uh, a logical decision. So we need to move on and we need to consider the advantages. So an advantage is something which describes what about a particular feature is so special. So this is when we start getting into comparisons. So we're talking about lighter or smaller or faster, that type of thing. And depending on um, the applicable laws in whatever country you're working in, you may be 
comparing this directly with the competition, or you may be just saying, in general terms, this works more quickly than anything else on the market, this is smaller than anything else on the market, this is lighter than anything else on the market. If you can get away with doing a direct comparison with whatever the market leader is, and you feel you can do it with all the uh, legal safeguards in place without offending anybody and without putting your business at risk, then by all means, put a direct comparison with the industry leading um, product. Um, interestingly, Mike Philsame did this recently with a launch he was doing. And uh, on his website, he put a whole load of comparisons with other market leading products. And um, one of the guys got in touch with him, made a video, sent it across to Mike and said, you know, this is the comparisons that you've put on your website. These are the ones that are wrong. Please change them. And to be fair, Mike did. He changed it very quickly. But, you know, it's quite embarrassing from a publicity standpoint. Somebody's out there saying, yeah, I know you're a marketer, and I know you're trying to sell your product as being better than mine, but actually, you've got it wrong. And um, so you've got to be careful. But if you can do it well, then why not make a direct comparison? So we're now we're starting to introduce... Um, ben, sort of taking the features, we're looking at the advantages, and people are now starting to make comparison decisions. Well, okay, yeah, this is, um, it is, it doesn't weigh very much, but it's, not only does it not weigh very much, it's actually lighter than anything else we've looked at. Okay, so we've got a feature, we've got an advantage as well. But what makes people buy is the benefits. Okay. Benefit translates a feature or advantage into something for which the customer accepts that they have a need. So we're actually going further now. We're starting to speak to people's emotions. So in the benefits, we're talking about the results of things. We're talking about the lifestyle that people might enjoy from this particular feature. We're talking about recognition that they might receive. Really, really digging into these emotions. And an exercise that can be very beneficial, particularly when you first start working with scripts, is to go through and draw out the features for your product. And the features can be quite quick, usually, to, um, to draw out. Once you've got the features, for each one, look at the advantages and say, OK, what's the advantage of this feature? So if your feature is that this is, more compre that this is the most comprehensive thing on the market, Okay? The feature is very comprehensive. The advantage is that nothing else on the market is even half as comprehensive as this. What's the benefit? So the benefit for that particular feature is that you don't need to go and buy more courses or more information in order to get the same results. Okay, So go through break it down, feature, advantage, benefits. List all the features for each one, draw out the advantages and the benefits. And what you'll start to notice is that some of them really jump out at you. Okay, Feature might be that it's blue. The advantage is that blue is a nice color. The benefit is, if you like blue, <laughs> this is a really pretty thing. Okay, Probably not going to be one of your strongest selling points. So uh, just be aware of that. But as I say, if you go through this thoroughly, you'll start seeing benefits that really jump out. You'll start uncovering them and getting to the point where you think, yeah, that has to be in my sales video or in my sales letter. 